so guys i am a verified educator on an online learning platform called on academy right where i am making courses for gate examination both in hindi and english right so you can download the on academy learning app search my name over there act and follow me on that particular platform for awesome videos on the gate chemistry examination hey guys a very good morning to all of you so today i have got to you a very important trick okay so for those of you who do not understand falcon and model or cramps model which is very useful for your exams there's a super important trick or super short trick which you can use and you can say bye bye to your falcon and cramps model right so now let's begin with this particular trick in case you have if you want a detailed video of what exactly is falcon and model or cramps model if you're preparing for your exams you know subjective exams then you can follow the link over here now coming on to the short trick which will be useful for entrance exams or in general also to predict the compound uh, the the structure of that particular compound or the stereochemistry of that particular compound now talking about falcon and model so there's one thing that you need to know that first of all if you have a prochiral center okay if you have a prochiral center like over here this carbonyl carbon is a prochiral center a prochiral center is a center which has uh, the ability to become a chiral center on nucleophilic addition right so this is a prochiral center and in general if we have any carbonyl compound okay in general if i take any carbonyl compound and uh, let's say if, if this is a carbonyl compound over here you know which has two r groups attached to it okay so this is a ketone with two r groups so this is not a chiral center because if i if let's say i attack a nuclear if if there is a nucleophilic addition taking place uh, this will turn into oh and you know let's say hydride if you are doing reduction so this will become hydrogen and oh now uh, since this is not a chiral center so it does not matter what the stereochemistry of this particular carbon is but let's say this r group and this r group are different now this ketone becomes a prochiral center okay so now this becomes a prochiral center so now since this becomes a prochiral center because once the hydrogen gets attached to this particular carbon there will be four different substituents so it will become a chiral center right so this over here is a prochiral center now let's say the hydrogen uh, reduction takes place and hydrogen gets added okay so again we get uh, the alcohol and now the stereochemistry of the alcohol can be anything it can be below the plane also it can be above the plane also right so we'll get a racemic mixture but what happens is in case we have a chiral center which is next to our prochiral center like over here you can see this carbon over here this is a chiral center right this is a chiral center because it has three different substituents and so this center becomes prochiral in nature but it was observed that it does not give you a racemic mixture it gives it does not give you a racemic mixture it gives you some selectivity so why does this that selectivity come uh, that is because that is explained by your falcon and model and the cram model right cram's model but there are many questions in which you are not able to visualize how the falcon and model how the cram model will work so for this this particular trick would be very useful now coming on to the trick so you have let's say a a ligand okay uh, sorry a large group let's say l is your large group S is your small group and methyl is your medium group. So there are three kinds of groups uh, which are attached to your chiral center next to the prochiral center. Uh, over here it's the carbonyl carbon, right? So we have a large group, a small group and a methyl group. So the simple trick is that when a large group is anti to your ketone, the nucleophile, whatever it is, whatever it may be, will attack from the smaller group side, okay? And in case the large group is syn to the ketone, then the nucleophile will attack from the medium group size. What that means is over here the large group you can see is anti. They both are in the same plane you can see. So they both are sorry they both are uh, sin in this case. They both are sin in this case. If this L group instead of going up or in the same direction of the ketone it goes towards the below side. Okay if it makes an anti periplanar arrangement then you say they are anti to each other right so over here this large group is sin so in case it is sin the nucleophile will attack from below the uh, from the from, from the plane from where the medium group is present okay so if large group is sin to the ketone then the nucleophile will attack from the medium group size so over here the medium group over here is methyl okay right or i'll just write m only so the medium group over here is m so now since m is above the plane so your nucleophile is going to attack from above the plane so if the nucleophile attacks in this case from above the plane the product will be uh, like this so now your oh will go below the plane since the nucleophile is attacking from above the plane your oh will go uh, below the plane right so what will be the product in this case is this oh will be below the plane and the nucleophile that is attached will be above the plane okay the nucleophile attached will be above the plane the same case will if it was 
if this L group was anti, then the nucleophile would have attacked from the uh, from the plane of the smaller group. So since if this, let's say if this L was anti, that means it was facing downwards, and uh, then in that case the nucleophile would have attacked from the smaller group size. So the smaller group over here is below the plane. So the nucleophile would have attacked from below the plane, and the OH would have formed above the plane. That's the simple trick that you need to use. Now there is something very confusing that is the chelation. Okay, so sometimes what happens? Chelation happens. What exactly is chelation? Again, you can see that video. You can refer to that video over there where your uh, I'll explain that later because then this video will become very long, right? So in case of chelation, what happens is now chelation happens where? So this is the table given in Clay, uh, Clayton, which all metals are, uh, like to chelate, right? So lithium is a very good chelating agent. Magnesium, zinc, copper, titanium, cerium, and manganese. So these are the important metals which show chelation whereas sodium and potassium they don't show chelation. Now in case of chelation what happens is let's see this example. So in that case you don't have to consider the large group. In that case in the case of chelation you have to consider the Z group. Okay what exactly is Z? Z is any functional group which will have lone pair of electrons which can you know form a chelate with the um, metal okay so for example functional groups like or methoxy right nhr amine groups uh, then sr okay sulfur because all of them have lone pair of electrons right so like ome um, you know then nhme nhbn nh benzyl uh, or sme right so these kind of groups can show chelation so this z is nothing but those kind of groups now in case of chelation what happens is whatever happens in the general case you just reverse it you just reverse it and over there you don't have to consider the large group in case of chelation you don't have to consider the large group you have to consider the uh, group which has lone pair of electrons the z group which i have denoted by z so whatever uh, the group which has lone pair of electrons you need to consider whether that is sin or anti to your ketone okay so over there you have to consider that if z group is anti or uh, sin to the uh, ketone right and in that case it reverses this particular table reverses that in that particular case if it is uh, if your z group is anti then the nucleophile will attack from medium group size just reverse this whatever the, uh, you are getting for a um, large group in the normal case in the chelation just reverse that effect all right now i'll take an example to show you uh, for example over here again you can see both are sin the z group is also the z group is sin to the ketone right the Z group is sent to the ketone. Now what happens is, uh, in this case we are adding Me to Mg. So the nucleophile over here is methyl or methyl and magnesium is there. Now you can see in the table, magnesium is a chelating group, right? Only sodium and potassium do not chelate, most of the metals do chelate. So magnesium is uh, definitely able to chelate. So what happens over there is that uh, now since both are sent to each other, so in this case what was happening was our nucleophile was attacking from the medium group size but i told you when chelation takes place it the, the order reverses so now the methyl will attack from the smaller group size so if the methyl attacks from the smaller group size your methyl will go, go below the plane and your oh will come above the plane so this will be the stereochemistry okay this will be the major product don't think that this will be the only product this is not going to be the only product this is going to be the major product and this is going to be the major product in this particular case all right now let's take a very good example to see how exactly we have to do such questions right so let's take this example it's a very good example that was given in Clayton and you can see over here we have a phenyl group attached to CO and then we have a methyl group which is above the plane and then we have OME so they don't have they haven't shown you the stereochemistry of hydrogen in this question so obviously if methyl is above the plane and OME is in the plane then you can draw the hydrogen below the plane right so hydrogen over here is below the plane now what you need to consider is if you're adding sodium borohydride over here I've taken sodium borohydride and in this case I'm taking Me to Mg okay in this case I'm taking Me to Mg so let's see what will happen now in this case again your OME and your ketone are uh, sent to each other right so if we are adding sodium borohydride so in this case a nucleophile is going to be H minus right a nucleophile is going to be H minus in this case when you are adding sodium borohydride so this H minus is going to attack this ketone and its selectivity diastereoselectivity will depend on this group on this particular car car carbon right so you can see the OME group which is capable of chelating is Z is basically uh, is basically you can see 
राइट the medium group over here is methyl so it will attack from the medium group size so it will attack from above the plane so the hydrogen is going to attack above the plane and if it attacks this ketone above the plane then what do we get as the product if it attacks from above the plane this ketone will be formed this alcohol will be formed below the plane right and then we'll have hydrogen above the plane and then this methyl over here like this ome and then hydrogen so this is going to the product the oh is below the plane and the hydrogen will be sorry just one second i'll just draw it properly oh above the, below the plane and hydrogen above the plane in this particular case so you can see over here hydrogen above the plane oh below the plane now what about me to mg so me to mg over here the nucleophile is me minus right me minus is the nucleophile right and uh, since it's magnesium it is able to chelate there is a presence of the z group uh, a group with a with a lone pair of electrons the methoxy group so definitely chelation will take place and both are z to each other both are z to each other so in this case again your uh chelation will take place and you'll get the opposite stereochemistry so what will happen both are sent to each other so the nucleophile is going to attack from the smaller group size so the smaller group over here is the hydrogen so it will attack from below the plane and the oh will form above the plane so in this case you can see it's a perfect example where due to chelation the stereochemistry has been reversed all right or the diastereo uh, diastereo uh, selectivity has been reversed right so we'll have a methyl over here and then this is going to be a major product right so this is going to be a major product so i hope you understood the concept you can try it out for the various amount of questions that have been asked in the csi net exam and for this to complement this you should know absolute configuration that how to find the absolute configuration of this particular carbon whether it's r or s through this diagram or what or what is the stereochemistry of this particular carbon that will also help you so if you are able to find the absolute configuration and if you know this trick you can solve any question from falcon and model and cram's rule all right there is some very tricky questions that are given clayden which i will definitely try and explain in the next video right definitely i will make a video right after this one where i'll try and explain you some confusing uh, stereochemistry that that might think that you might think is you know uh, it is not uh, going according to the um, a trick that i have taught you but that's actually not the case so in the next video i'll talk about certain exceptions they're not actually exceptions they're just very tricky uh, things that you need to understand uh, regarding your uh, falcon and cram's rule right so i hope you found this video useful if you did please subscribe to my channel and i'll see you in the next video thank you